So, where the exit serve more than one floor, only the occupant load of each floor considered individually need to be used in computing the capacity of the exit of that floor. So that is uh, the whole concept as explained a while ago. So that's why we uh, are able to determine the capacity or these numbers, how to compute these numbers, okay? Uh, we already know how to compute, okay? The occupant's load or the capacity of the exit. Now, uh, in this uh, picture, capacity of egress system from point on stairs where occupants from floors above and below converge. Okay, for example, you have here the uh, point of occupant going to this uh, exit uh, or egress system. Okay, so there are 150 on this uh, lower floor, 150 occupants. There are 150 occupants from the higher floor. So 150 going down using that, and 150 going up. So as you can see, this is the what? The grade level or the ground level outside of the building. So this is underground, 150, a second floor, 150, and going out of the building from this exit. How many? 300. 150 and 150, that is 300. So when means of egress from floor above and below converge at an intermediate floor, the capacity of the means of egress from the point of convergence shall not be less than the sum of the two. So not be less than. So it could be equal or more. Okay. So shall not be less than. So the minimum requirement is equal. It could be more but not less. So it could be 300. Okay, your design parameter should be 300 so, or more. 350, you can do it. 350 as your design parameter in designing your uh, means of egress or this. From this point to this point, you can design this as uh, with a capacity of 300 per zone. Okay, so meaning to say, even the exit, uh, the exit, the means of egress, okay, they are computed. They are not just ah decided arbitrarily, uh, just uh, just uh, fix an exit in this point. That is not how to do it. There is a code computation for this, okay? And the computation is what we call analysis. And the analysis or the computation must be submitted to the uh, authority having jurisdiction. So you have to say, so what will happen if you are an engineer and you cannot submit uh, a computation? There is no analysis. Meaning you just what? Guess. You just guess, ah, uh, we have this uh, size of the door, 810 mm, because uh, 810 is the size of the wheelchair. You could be you could be approved, <laughs> but you don't have any computation or analysis. Meaning to say, the one who will approve your uh, design do not know or do not follow the code. Do not follow the design code. This is a, this is one of the design requirement. Okay, so if uh, the one who will approve your design knows about the code, okay, so your uh, design will be rejected. Okay? You will redesign. Okay, so next concept. Where any required egress capacity from a balcony or mezzanine passes through the room below, the required capacity shall be added. Take note, mezzanine occupants should be added. Okay? Balcony occupants should be added. Okay? So, so that you can, you can find out the required capacity of the room below. 
below should be added to the below. So, so if we have a mason in here with occupant load of 50 person, so we will add this to the occupant load of this uh, ground floor. Okay. So street floor occupant load. So ground floor occupant load is 200 plus 50. So the combined capacity must be 250 person or more. Okay. You could use a design parameter or design requirement of 250 or 300, which is more than 250. That is allowed by the code. But using 200 is not allowed because you have to add 50 to 200, and that is 250. Okay? So that is the design requirement. Now, what are the other uh, important things in this uh, module? We have uh, code requirement for every uh, type of ap application, what we call occupant load factor. So we have two examples in uh, previous uh, video. Let us uh, use assembly and, and uh, apartment. So where is the apartment? Residential apartment here. How many? We are using square meter per person, not the square foot per person. So let us use square meter. So for uh, apartment here, apartment building, 18.6 square meter per person. That is the space requirement, okay, per person. That is occupant load, factor. So 18.6 square meter per person. That is also the same as what here hotel board and care facilities the same with apartment okay so let us uh, take a look at the assembly concentrated use without fixed seating less concentrated use bench type seating fixed seating so which one do you think is TCO? Which one do you think is TCO? Probably not fixed seating, no? But less concentrated juice. So we have less concentrated juice in TCO rather than concentrated juice. Concentrated juice is about like theater or a stage home. Huh? But in this year, because that is a school, uh, it is less concentrated use without fixed seating. So like this, uh, less concentrated use without fixed seating. 1.4 square meter net per person. Okay. Okay. So versus, versus 18.6 square meter per person. So the requirement is great if the uh, application is apartment. Imagine one person for every 18.6 uh, square meter. 18.6 square meter is uh, larger than the parking space for a car. A parking space for a car is about uh, 16. Uh, a smaller, a smaller parking space for a car is about 12 square meter. And this is 18 square meter. The size of uh, the car is about 10 square meter. 10 square meter. One person for that uh, space for a car parking, only one person. What about for uh, TCO? 1.4 square meter. 1.4 square meter is uh, 1.4 square meter is the I don't know about the women or ladies uh, comfort room in TCO, but the CR4 men, this male CR, the male CR in TCO, there are what? There are, there are uh, uh, toilet bowl rooms, right? there are toilet bowl rooms. There are four 
There are four. Separate toilet bowl with uh, privacy for each of the four. So those, those small, those small cubicle, those small cubicle, that is 1.4 square meter. So one person for that, that uh, small area. Okay? When you are using assembly use, okay? That is, that is the, the uh, requirement for assembly. So take a look. We have two uh, comparison, apartment and assembly use, ATC. That's a... Uh, Remember that because we will use that again and again. And also take a look. Let's take a look. Where is the mall? Application for mall. Application for mall is mercantile. Okay. Mercantile for sales area. Sales area on two or more street floors. Sales area and floor, sales area and floors above street floor, floors of portion of floors used for uh, offices. Okay. So mall, so we have mall structure. Okay. Mall structure, we have pair factors applicable to use of the space. So mall uh, depend, it depends upon the, the, uh, so per, uh, per specific area, for example, the first floor of a mall, for example, SM, there are different uh, what, businesses. Okay? There are different businesses there, so per area. Oh. Factors are applicable per uh, the use, the type of uh, purpose, the occupancy. So there is no single factor for a mall. So, for example, sales on a street floor, 2.8 compared to 18.6 for apartment, 2.8. And uh, for uh, our uh, TCO, 1.4. Take note, times two requirement for sales area on a street floor. Meaning uh, street floor, meaning ground floor. Okay, ground floor is um, what we mean by street floor. So if you are selling something on the ground floor, that is 2.8 square meters per person. But if you are selling on, uh, on, on floor below street floor, 2.8, no? But on floors above street floor, that is 5.6. So 5.6 square meters, the requirement if, uh, you have second floor up to uh, higher floors. Okay? So 2.8. So meaning uh, we have uh, what? Uh, more conservative requirement on ground floor rather than the higher floors. Okay. So by that, uh, again, this is your professor, Dr. AP saying, Engineering is for nation building.